Hey, what's up? How's it going? Welcome to my 2018 Fire Cape Guide. We're going to be killing Jad in the uh, in the fight caves, and I'm going to be bringing you guys the best way to kill him. Honestly, I've, I haven't failed in a couple years, and if you guys if you guys are sick of failing, I mean... What? What? But he, he, he was spawning totally on the other side. This guide is going to be fully in depth, but uh, decently short. Like some of the other videos are, you know, 30 minutes. But uh, I feel like I can jam pack all the knowledge and get you through the fight caves with no problem at all. And honestly, Jad is not that hard once you learn the techniques that I'm about to show you in this video. Also, if you guys do enjoy this video, make sure you check out all my 99 guides I have just posted. And I'm actually doing a Zolra guide video very soon as well, so you know, make sure you guys stay tuned and check it out. Also, just letting you guys know, I'm doing a giveaway for the subscribers. I'm picking three people to get the blowpipes, the scales, the darts, and the holy sandals. So if you do want to enter, just comment your RSN, and you know, feel free to like the video. That that always helps. And on top of that, we're giving away a free 30 mil on Twitter tomorrow. So uh, make sure you guys check it out. All right, so jumping into some gear setup, starting it off with the pure setup first. Looking at the left side, we have the poor peer, and uh, yeah, we can see he is definitely pretty poor. If I would suggest a gear upgrade, I would definitely go with the blowpipe. It's uh, it's gonna be better than any other upgrade you could do. Moving on to the rich peer in the middle, of course, he's got the anguish necklace, which is like 16 mil right now, very expensive. The imbued archer's ring, 4.3 mil at the making of this video, and I'm telling you guys, you do not need to you know spend all this money on these expensive items. It's only going to help you out like 3 to 5 to 8% with your accuracy and knowing the techniques and you know all the safe spots it's going to it's going to be a lot more beneficial. All right, so looking at the ideal Zerker pure, you would definitely want to go with the blessed uh, DI boots. They're about 900k right now, but they do give prayer bonus and they're uh, definitely better than the snakeskin boots. We can see as well that he actually has barrel gloves instead of van braces. And if you don't have those, you know, you can use a combat bracelet. Same with the Fury. If you can't afford it, you go with the Glory. It doesn't really matter. And if you guys are curious what's in the arrow slot, it's actually a blessing. It only gives one prayer. Like, it's not that big of a deal, but you could use it if you want. Moving on to the main setup. Looking at the beginner on the left side. Uh, yeah, Varak Helm is definitely going to be very good. It gives prayer bonus, very high defense. The Varak skirt could be transferred with, you know, blessed dehyde legs. Like I said, it's what you guys want to bring, what you have in the bank. If we take a look at the advance, we can see he got rid of, you know, his clunky tank gear. And he has max DPS void, which is, uh, you know, definitely the best. If you guys have void, use it. Although it is less defense, so you could, you know, take more damage. So watch out. As far as doing Jad for Slayer tasks, it's one of the best tasks in the game, and uh, the pet rate is pretty common as well. But yeah, you get 25k points for completing Jad, and you get like 30k points throughout the cave. And I'll show you guys how to do this in like 40 minutes to 50 minutes to an hour. So you know, it's over 50k XP an hour, it's a great task. So looking at my setup, this is actually what I'll be using. And uh, I went with a medium gear setup, like this is probably what you would be using if you're watching this video. I would highly recommend the blowpipe, the damage per second that it does, and you know, it venoms. As far as void range armor versus black de-eyed, or you know, blessed de-eyed and tank armor, I would definitely go with the void. You're going to be getting a lot more damage, although the de-eyed is going to be a little bit more accuracy and defense. It's all up to you, it's really, you know, what you want to do, if you have void or not, what you can afford. And uh, same goes with like snakeskin boots versus blessed eyed boots versus Pegisians rangers as well as the archer ring you don't need it it's only gonna help out like three percent you could uh, imbue it as well you could wear glory or fear it doesn't matter whatever is best for you and what you can afford the biggest overall difference is definitely gonna be that blowpipe but if you do use uh, a rune sebo I would recommend bringing a book over a shield because with this book you're gonna get prayer bonus and uh, range accuracy if you get the book of the law. And as far as bolts, I would definitely recommend bringing a stack of emerald bolts. It has a very high chance to poison, and it poisons 5 damage every 15 seconds. And fighting the level 360 majors, it's going to take around a minute to, you know, minute and a half. So that's 30 extra damage. After it is poison, you would of course want to switch to the diamond bolts. Oh yeah, it is time to get that fire cape. One tip I could give before is actually pre-pot though. So you're going to want to take an anglerfish, 
which heals over your HP, or you could just, you know, brew and then super restore. But yeah, or a defense pot and a range pot. Just, just make sure you're fully potted and drink a stamina. As far as the supplies go, this should be on point. Two range pots, 10 brews, and uh, 16 super restores. I see some people using like pea pots, but super restores are the same price, and they actually give you like one or two more prayer points per sip. I recommend not touching these too much, and if you do, always sip three brews, and then a super restore, and then another range pot, because you don't want to waste it, and uh, you know, you don't want to be sitting at like 50 HP the whole time either. Also, one item I would suggest is getting the Holy Wrench. You get it from uh, completing the Rum Deal quest, and it actually gives you one prayer point more per every sip. So if you have like 20 prayer points in your inventory, if you have this, it's probably worth honestly one to two more pea pots. And like I said after watching this video, getting a fire cape should be a breeze, but if you're having some problems, you could buy purple sweets, although they're like 2.5k each, very expensive, but they do stack, they do give you run energy, and a chance to heal you like a 1-3 to three HP, so yeah, it's decent, you just sit there and chomp them down, but I mean, if you're trying to go from like 60-80 to 80 HP, that's like 20-30k. to 30K. Also, I would highly suggest you guys get your hotkeys dialed out, and uh, it's really gonna help you. I mean, this is why so many people fail. And of course, you guys can just copy mine. I think they are the most efficient and the most common. They're actually the hotkeys from like 2005, which everyone used to use. And uh, yeah, they're really good PKing hotkeys as well. I'll definitely be covering each monster more in depth when we actually, you know, jump into the cave. But here's a quick overlay, and uh, yeah, look at that Jad Max hit. 97. Same as the monsters, I'll actually be covering this much more in depth when we enter the cave and you know, we start actually running around. There's five possible Jad spawns and there's three rock safe spots, but we're gonna be using the Italy rock. I've mainly used the Italy safe spot since uh, seventh grade and yeah, it hasn't let me down. I, I really do feel like it is the best safe spot. All right, here we go. Let's get that cape. Starting it off from wave, you know, one to 10, it's very simple. I would uh, target the bats as like your number one priority because every hit they do, even if it's a zero, they lower your prayer by one point. Throughout the cave, you're gonna see a whole bunch of those uh, level 45s and uh, they're, they're not much of a threat. So really don't worry about them. Unless you're a peer, you might wanna safe spot them on the Italy rock, but uh, it's not too big of a deal. At wave 7, the level 90 ranger pops out. He can hit decent, I'm not gonna lie. So, uh, pray range, and you could save spot him and uh, save spot the 45, but I like being in the center just because I can kill everything, I can see everything, and get it done really quick because these first, you know, 20 waves are quite simple. Once the level 180 melee shows up, it gets a tad bit more tricky, but it's still quite simple. You will definitely want to leave the middle and go southwest of the Italy rock, and this will be your domain. You're gonna be here the whole time. Like I said earlier, the south side of the rock is uh, the safe spot side, because if you go north, he's just gonna whip around. You can see right here, he just he just hits me, but you can whip him back and get him caught on the north uh, little, you know, boot hook. Once you get in the early 20s, the ranger will spawn on top of the melee, and uh, of course it's random where they spawn. That is why you want to stay on the southwest side. So, uh, you know, you can see where they're coming from. You can predict any type of pathing. It goes for the south and the north side of uh, this Italy rock, the boot. You guys want to run fully east so the ranger gets pulled his maximum, you know, potential. Because if you guys sit like uh, five squares north, he's going to be in the middle of the room. And you need to suck him close to the, the safe spot. Plus, if you do that, there's a good chance he'll actually spawn like this. Feels good. This is a really good example of a perfect spawn. We can see the melee uh, spawn in the middle of the room and then he walked towards me and I of course have him safe spotted and caught on the rock and then the ranger spawned right there. And this is a very, very common uh, format spawn. You're gonna see the mage spawning right where the ranger did multiple times. All right, so here's an example where you need to make a quick decision. Are you gonna sit here and just pray range and you know waste your prayer and attack the melee while he's safe spotted? Or are you going to pull the um, ranger like on the north side like I showed you earlier? And we can see right here that I have pulled the ranger far enough so I can actually use a rapid on him with the melee trapped. Although, if the melee was a ranger or a major, like a distance uh, attacker, it could hit me right here. That's why you'd have to stand one or two squares back where that little lava pool is and hit long range so the mage wouldn't attack you. Although, if you had a rune crossbow, 
you could stand in the same spot with Rapid as a peer and not train defense. All right, this is gonna happen quite a bit where the mage or the ranger spawn south and you know, you just happen to be on the north side and remember the north side is not a safe spot for the melee. So I'm gonna wait for him to come and then I'm gonna pray melee for just one second, run around the wall, pray mage or range and then I would attack the priority which is most likely the range or the mage because uh, once I kill him, I can turn off my prayer and then just chill back, safe spot the melee. Also, if you notice the ranger is hitting you, but the melee isn't close, you can just, uh, you know, run out, kill the ranger if you're experienced, because you could get hit like a 25 by the melee. We can also see that you can use other monsters as a safe spot. I mean, even these small level 22s work against this uh, huge, huge rat thing. All right, I got another tip, which you will definitely run into. It's when, uh, you know, the ranger or the mage or whatever is actually stacked behind the melee, which is safe spot. And yeah, the blowpipe's distance is too short. You're gonna run into the melee and he's gonna kind of walk around and then he'll actually path out of it and hit you. So you're gonna wanna use the long range or kill the melee or the monster that's in uh, the safe spot first. Wave 29 and 30 and 31 are actually very, very easy. The wave 29 is gonna be one melee and two rangers. Just use the tactics I went over and it shouldn't be a problem at all. Level 30 is actually gonna be two melee which, uh, you know, you could just stand in the middle of the room and pray melee. I would say wave 31 is where it really, really begins. And yeah, make sure you pray mage. So from this stage until wave 60, it's honestly very, very simple. It's actually just repeating itself. Now you're about to do the, the bat again and then to do the double bat with the major being there the whole time. And of course, that's the priority. So pray mage the whole time and don't ever take it off. I'm not gonna lie, that is a little over exaggerated. There's a couple times where, you know, he's safe spotted and stuff, but main point, he is very dangerous and hits, hits very high. At wave 39, the ranger comes out, and remember guys, he only hits like 12s, 15s, 10s, it's not that uh, big of a deal, and it's kind of uncommon, so if you take a few hits from him, don't worry, just focus on the major mostly. I definitely have some more tips to give, but I don't want to keep repeating myself with all the safe spots, because it's honestly kind of the same. And of course, the next wave was the exact same thing. The range and the mage were just, you know, flopped. So I would pray mage and then uh, safe spawn him behind the lava pool. Everything's pretty chill until wave 46, which uh, the melee comes out with the ranger and the mage. Just keep using all the safe spots and all the tactics I've gone over earlier, and this should be a breeze. This is a pretty good example of something very, very stressful. We can see the major is already on me, so I'm praying mage because, uh, you know, he's going to hit me like a 60 if I don't. I'm going to take out the ranger very quick, only in three hits, and then I can see the melee is coming. So I'm going to run north, get him behind the wall just in time to get the safe spot. Another semi-stressful scenario, we got the melee safe spotted south. Wow, that was a tongue twister. And then we got the mage and the range attacking us at the same time. And uh, of course, the melee is a melee, not not an artillery attacking monster because if it was the mage i'd be getting hit right now but i can actually use rapid and just you know chill back and i definitely want to focus on the ranger while i'm praying mage take him out quick and then uh you know take out the mage and then safe spot the melee also make sure throughout this whole time that the little bats are your number one priority because uh, i haven't been paying attention you know here and there and they'll hit me down like 20 prayer points so definitely keep an eye out if you happen to be out of place or you know everything spawns too quick you're not expecting it you can also use this safe spot just south of the the boot the italy rock and we can see i used it quite well it's just an example of using your surroundings to your advantage all right so it's coming soon wave 60 we got one mage two rangers and a melee we got the mage hitting us with two rangers hitting us and then the melee is safe spotted, but we're taking mad damage. There's nothing I could really do. Like I could run south and then uh, east, you know, around the 360, but he could melee me and knock me for a 50 and kill me. So it's best to probably just try and, uh, you know, kill these rangers on long range while I eat up and, you know, do, do what I can. The next two waves are very simple. For wave 61, make sure you go south. So when the melee does spawn, he'll actually get caught on that, you know, safe trap. And it's just two melees, you knock them out, then the 360 is there, very simple. After that, it's two 360s, very simple again, just get ready. Here we go, men, time to defeat Jad. Once the, the second 360 is almost dead, make sure you brew up, restore, and you range pot, you're fully ready to go. 
I like to actually go to the north side of this boot rock and sit there with the range prey. He's more common to use range attacks and they hit more. Like I said earlier, make sure you guys have the hotkeys dialed out and uh, you know, you're warmed up, all that good stuff because you're, you're going to need them like a lot. That This is this is the number one boss and uh, in the game, probably at this level base at least, that you really need to get the prey flicks down. Alright, you guys want a really good tip. And I'm uh, not trying to brag, but you know how I'm like 28 and oh, I've never been defeated on Jad once in my whole life. I'm not even I'm not even kidding. But yeah, I don't use sounds. I make sure the sounds are off. Everyone says make sure the sounds are on. Make sure they are off and look at his feet. That's all you have to do. His feet are are the biggest giveaway. You know, he either stomps or he stands there and, and hovers for a couple seconds. Plus, you're looking at the screen. You know your ears don't get distracted and there's just more for you to think about so I truly believe having the sounds off it's gonna help you out probably like 30 or 50 percent another awesome tip is get decently close but you know still far away where he's not gonna melee you so you can see him very good but when the healers come you know you don't get all panicked you're already ready and set and you don't even have to move you could long range the healers but again you don't really need to I would suggest two blow pipe hits for each healer and then once you have all of them on you, pull them away just a little bit so they're not healing the boss. And even if one or two are healing, your blowpipe should out DPS the Jad and you know, you should kill them. Another great tip is make sure you hover over the opposite prayer, which you know, you're not praying. If you're praying range, hover over the mage and get ready and don't get jumpy either. Sometimes, you know, he could mage you three to four to five times in a row. So don't get jumpy like some people do. Oh my God. Oh my god, I'm actually gonna cry. Oh my fucking god! Oh my god, no way. We can see it went quite smooth. It was actually flawless. He didn't hit me one time. Although the healers, you know, do stack up like eights and tens and fives, so you may want to brew. And if you do brew, only sip like one, probably one, just one sip, and then go back to your prayer. And uh, we can see even here, I'm like 30 HP. I would rather be 15 or 20 HP and be fully focused on my prayers than you know starting the panic and yeah, yeah that's when that's when it goes south and remember Jack in it like 90 plus so uh, yeah if you miss one prayer flick you're done for. Where is Jad? Where is he? Don't see him. Oh my God! I don't see him. Roll. I didn't saw him. Oh yeah, there it is, the fire cape on the alternative account. And this guy's only like 90 combat, so you know, it shows it's not that hard. You guys can do it. I do hope you found this guide useful, helpful, you know, you learn some stuff and leave a comment if you watch it and then you get the cape. Like that would actually mean a lot to me because uh, yeah, that, that would that'd be, you know, mission complete. And also don't forget to check out all the 99 guides. And I'm also posting a Zolra video, you know, guide very soon. So, you know, check that out if you're looking to do that. One of the best bosses in the game to get gold. But yeah, guys, I wish you luck on your cape. Have a good one.